I've seen a lot of talk show hosts doing different political quizzes and that kind of thing, and I think those segments are kind of fun, so I'm going to do one that you probably haven't seen so far. It's called the Nine Axes Quiz, and essentially what it does is instead of giving you somewhere where you are on the political spectrum, whether it's the graph that, like, they had the political compass quiz that kind of made the rounds, and I don't know, it was kind of fun, but it was overly simplistic, and, and frankly, I don't think it gave very accurate readings, but, you know, these are things that are fun, and so we're going to take today what's known as the Nine Axis Quiz, and I'm going to take this live on air so you get to see my results, uh, and, and this is completely impromptu. I haven't seen any of this, so basically, the way that this works, and you can see some of the description there, I encourage you to go back and read it for yourself, it, it takes these different values and asks you questions to help you understand whether you fall on this side or that side of a political value, and through that, sort of giving you a better idea of exactly where you stand when it comes to a lot of important political questions. Uh, there's a few that I agree with or disagree with, but we'll probably come across that as I'm taking this quiz anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the shorter version just for time's sake. I may take the longer version at some point, and if I do, I'll post my results, and, and so you can see them on this, uh, on this video. So let's go ahead and just take the short 45-question version. I think that's going to be more than enough content. And uh, all of these do, I, I read in the description earlier, that they go between uh, strongly agree and strongly disagree, which probably helps with the accuracy a little bit, but we'll just see how it goes. If you have nothing to hide then you shouldn't care about the government having access to your communications. Okay, strongly disagree. Not a big fan of the NSA, will, or the NSA surveillance state. National cultures are important to protect. Mm. I'm going to have to go with just kind of agree on that one because there are some cultures that really shouldn't be protected. I agree in a general sense that to preserve history and, and being a history buff myself, that there are certain things that we need to preserve just so that we have them for future reference. But as far as like, should we protect certain cultures? Well, no, some, some cultures are superior to others. And, you know, I, I'm even going to go to neutral or unsure just because you could make the case either way on that one. The elders in a society know the best path for it. Again, I don't think that's necessarily true. Age, with age comes wisdom typically, but there's also some, you could make the case either way on that one. When people have already suffered for technology to be developed, we should use that technology. Well, I don't know, that depends. Is the technology good? I'm not sure. Like, if, if you have a whole bunch of people that suffer in a medical trial, for example and it turns out that the drug is only effective 50% of the time and has horrible side effects, then I would go with no. So I guess that depends on the technology. I don't know. Pe people suffering for it, to me, doesn't really sound like a reason that we ought to use the technology. So I'm going to go with disagree. We should be more accepting of other cultures. Are they, are they saying we is America? Because America is already insanely tolerant and accepting of other cultures. But again, it depends on the culture. If you want to talk about, for example, the pagan culture where they're sacrificing children to idols, then I would go with no. But if we're talking about maybe culture like, I don't know, J Japanese, uh, Japanese culture or, uh, African culture, I mean, is I, I can see taking certain aspects of that culture and that being good. I, I don't mind sharing things like food and clothing and technology and all of those things. So, again, I, I think it depends on the culture, so I'm going to have to go with neutral. A nation should cooperate whenever it benefits them both. Well, yeah, I mean, mutually beneficial... Mutually beneficial... Uh, relationships. That's what free trade is all about. Government should be as concerned about foreign citizens as they are about those within their borders. Um, I, I guess, yeah, 
I would go strongly agree. I mean, if there's an American citizen out there that's being mistreated, I mean, uh, look at the Marine that got stuck and, and was imprisoned wrongfully in Mexico for like over 100, I think it was over 200 days, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, was was that Sergeant Tamarisi, I believe? So, yeah, I, I mean, government should absolutely be concerned about their citizens no matter where they are. Illegal immigrants have no benefits. Yeah, strongly agree. Strong states weaken a nation. Uh, strongly, strongly disagree in the highest possible sense. Strong states actually strengthen a nation. The freer the market, the freer the people. Again, strongly agree. Life, liberty, and property. I mean, really, a free market touches on all three of those basic core principles of freedom. So strongly agree. Having independent nations with the risk of global conflict creates a large threat to humanity as a whole. Um, no. Maybe? Again, it depends on the nation. I, hmm. I, I think what it's trying to say here, and, and maybe I'm projecting a little bit, but I think what it's trying to say here is that having those independent nations, nations with a high level of independency, absent of like a UN or something like that, that's something that is very risky. Uh, no, I don't have a problem with a sovereign nation behaving like a sovereign nation. I don't think independency is a threat, and I think that's what they're trying to say, so I'm going to go with strongly disagree. Let's see. Religious clothing should be banned from public. Uh, no, I mean... I guess the only exception is public indecency, but so I, I might go to disagree instead of strongly disagree, but I'm very much in favor of religious freedom. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with strongly disagree because I can't at least come up with a scenario where there's a religion that has clothing that ought to be banned. As a general rule, I, I tend to err on the side of liberty anyway, so I'm going to go with strongly disagree. Human-caused climate change is currently one of our greatest threats to our way of life. Uh, no. Well, the, the political reaction to, to climate change is a grave threat to our way of life, yes, but the, the climate, which I think is what it's getting at, the climate change itself being a threat to our way of life, I'm going to go with strongly disagree. Nations fighting among each other gets in the way of progress. Uh, see, that's another one that's vague, because... How do you define progress? If you're defining progress the way a progressive would, in other words, like one world order, then well, yeah, it absolutely gets in the way of it. But I don't know if that's what they mean by progress. If you're talking about human ingenuity, uh, to be honest, like it's an uncomfortable truth, but wartime has been some of the times where our technology advances the most. And a lot of the inventions that have been invented for war purposes tend to get repurposed later into other useful technology that can be used in peacetime. So if you're talking about scientific progress, then, I mean, it's... I don't know that it's necessarily worth the human toll, but wartime tends to actually advance technology quite a bit. So, uh... It's, it's kind of vague, but I'm going to go with disagree just because, it, generally speaking... There, there are certain times where war can stifle technology and stifle progress, but it can also help it along, even though I don't necessarily know that it's worth it. I think that actually when you're talking about human scientific and technological progress, war actually tends to kind of help along with that, which is a horrible thing to think about, but it's, it's generally true. It's a good idea to test a policy in one state rather than implementing it nationwide right away. Oh my gosh, yes. Could not agree with that one more. Only those who served in the military should be able to gain power in government. No, I'm going to go with strongly disagree. I do wish that we had more veterans. Uh, right off the top of my head, guys like Dan Crenshaw, Representative Dan Crenshaw of Texas, Lee Zeldin of New York. Like, th there are some great military veterans. And I think that we should have more veterans, frankly, in office. I think that that's one thing that the country used to do really well that it really doesn't anymore. So I agree that they should be more prevalent, but barring those that did not serve in the military, I mean, think about this. Yes, George Washington was a great leader, and his experience as a veteran and a general helped him out greatly with that. 
But what about Thomas Jefferson? What about John Adams, our second and third presidents? I had those backwards, but, you know, Adams and then Jefferson. They would have been barred from that. So I'm going to go with strongly disagree. Genetic modification should be used rarely, if ever. Um, I'm going to go with no, especially since the use of GMOs is one of the only freaking things that the federal government and the CDC has ever said, uh, yeah, it doesn't cause cancer. Like, they think everything causes cancer. They think red meat causes cancer, like, th or at the very least inconclusive. And every study they've done with GMOs, study after study after study, has shown that there is absolutely no risk that they can find associated with things like cancer, increase uh, in heart disease. There are a lot of things in agriculture, and, and keep in mind I have an ag degree from one of the greatest land-grant universities in the world. I have a ag degree, and so this is sort of my wheelhouse, and I've yet to see anything even somewhat conclusive that GMOs have a negative effect on people that consume them. There, there's a lot of things like pesticides that definitely can. GMOs are not one of them. In fact, GMOs allows us to use less pesticide and actually make food healthier in a lot of circumstances and, and have to use less chemical agents to do it. So uh, I think, if anything, we should be developing GMO te technology faster. So I'm going to go with a strongly disagree. A hierarchical state is best. Again, what does that mean? This is... This is one of the reasons I don't like taking some of these political quizzes is because, frankly, I already know, I've studied the ideas, I know where I stand, I, I'm not expecting any kind of surprises, and if it winds up being something that I disagree with in my results, then I'm, you know, I'm not going to suddenly change my beliefs. I, I already know where I stand on this, and that's the reason I find these fun, but usually more or less pointless. Uh, hierarchical state, are they talking about a class system like in federalism? Or, sorry, feudalism? Because I disagree with that, obviously. But if they're talking about just people making more money than others, like, that's... I, I don't... The question is way too vague to be able to answer, so I'm going to have to go with neutral. It is better to maintain a balanced budget than to ensure welfare for all citizens. Oh, strongly, strongly, strongly disagree. Or sorry, strongly agree. <laughs> Ooh, almost messed up there. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely better to balance the budget and live within our means rather than just provide welfare for everybody. In the modern era, militaries aren't really necessary. Um, no, strongly disagree. In fact, the modern era is as peaceful as it is because we do have a strong military. I support gay marriage. Again, this one's vague, because when you say support gay marriage, are you talking about state-sanctioned marriage? Because I'm against that, and I'm also against state-sanctioned heterosexual marriage. If you're talking about, do I think that we ought to have uh, people outlawing gay marriage, then I would have to say no. This is a church issue. This is not a state issue. And so, again, this is another example of a question where they say, it's vague. It's, it's so vague that I have no idea how my answer is going to reflect my actual beliefs on this. So I disagree, gay marriage. I disagree with gay marriage. I think it's horribly immoral, but if you're asking me on political grounds, I don't think it should be banned. I just think that there should be no such thing as legal marriage. So I, I don't know how to answer this one. The way that the question is worded, I'm going to take it as though it means from a moral standpoint. But if I answer based on a moral standpoint, I'm not giving an accurate representation of my political beliefs. So I really don't know. Like, I may just have to go with neutral again because it's just so insanely vague. This is one of the reasons, like I said, that these tests are, are kind of frustrating for me. It is necessary for the government to intervene in the economy to protect consumers. Um... There are a handful of extremely rare circumstances where I do believe the government need. I don't not at the federal level. Let me make that clear. <laughs> uh, states do have to intervene. In fact, the Department of Agriculture here in Alabama, I've toured their facilities where they inspect certain things like canned goods, and um, th there is there is a place for it, but it should be extremely rare, extremely limited, and the government should try try to stay out of the way as much as possible because remember, in a free market system, there is specifically a profit motive for companies to protect their consumers, and beyond that, there is also repercussions for them if they do not through the legal system. So 
I'm going to go with disagree. I, I can't quite get all the way to strongly disagree, but uh, a, a very, very limited amount of government intervention in things that, that deal with, you know, perhaps health or something like that. I don't know. But again, the, the wording's a little off because is it necessary? I don't know that it's necessary. In fact, right now, with all the coronavirus things going on, I was going to cover this at some point, that I believe it's Wyoming that actually has completely done away with the USDA food inspection for neighbors that want to just buy meat or, or buy other products from neighbors, at least in low-risk categories. So, I don't know. Um I'm batting back and forth between disagree and strongly disagree, but because I'm batting back and forth, I think that means that I have to go with disagree. Catering to popular opinion is detrimental to a nation. Mm. In general, that is true. But sometimes popular opinion is popular for a reason. So I'm going to go with agree because... I agree with it in most cases. Unfortunately, popular opinion usually sucks, and so I'm going to go with agree on that one. Police should be regulated more. Well, more than what? More than they are now? Because I don't think they necessarily should be regulated more than they are now. I think that police should definitely be regulated. Like, that's obvious. So, again, it's, it's so vague, I'm going to have to go with neutral. Only extremely talented immigrants, if that, should be permitted to enter the country. I don't want to go with strongly agree, because I think that you don't necessarily, like, I, I don't think you have to have a 4.0 as your graduating, in your graduating class of grad students to be able to be allowed into the country. But I do think that we need a merit-based immigration system. I think the way that we have it now, where basically... Um, some guy that has absolutely nothing to contribute to the country but happens to be related as a distant cousin to somebody that is a citizen gets priority over somebody that is extremely talented and would be coming here for a job. So I'm going to go with agree, but I I do agree, but I don't think that it should be the only criteria. I'll put it that way. People should think of themselves as citizens of their nation rather than their state. Oh, strongly. I, I, both. You know what? I'm going to go with strongly disagree because the answer is both. The answer is not, I think you should think of yourself as more of a citizen of your state than a citizen of the country. I just think that they should be equal. I'm a citizen of the state of Alabama, and I'm a citizen of the United States of America. I don't think of myself as more American than Alabamian or, or vice versa. I am a part of a state that is a part of a confederation of a nation known as the United States of America. Ergo, I'm going to go with disagree because I think they should be on even playing fields. And the way that the question is worded, that's how I would, that's how I would categorize it. The internet should be banned. <laughs> Strongly disagree. Uh, the reason I'm able to talk to you right now is for the internet, so I'm going to go with strongly disagree. <laughs> the general populace makes poor decisions. Yep, strongly agree. I don't even think I have to explain that one. There should not be international law. Strongly agree. Mm. Yeah, strongly agree. I couldn't come up with a way to justify giving other, anything less than strongly agree. No international law. The government should have access to the emails of suspected terrorists. Suspected terrorists, yeah. I don't want people rifling through regular people's emails to try to find the terrorists, but yeah, I agree with that. All right, question 31. Local governments can understand their citizens better than they could the na uh, sorry, better than the national government could. Oh yeah, strongly agree. See, war usually leads to worse outcomes. Well, I, again, this, this is one that it's so vague, I don't really know how to answer. Because war is what stopped Nazism, for example. So, was the better outcome to just not go to war and let Germany take over Europe and, you know, engage in the Holocaust and take over France and all of those things? I'm very isolationist to a great degree, but I think there are some very notable, very real exceptions. And so, 
it's it's one of those things I go back to some of the questions I was answering before. It depends on the war. If you're talking about World War II, World War II, then no, I think going to war was the right thing to do. But at the same time, it depends on how you look at it. That war absolutely devastated Europe. So Germany going to war was obviously a bad idea. Japan going to war was obviously a bad idea. But America co going to war in response to that was the right thing to do. And so it, it depends on the war, and it also depends on the perspective. Was it defensive? Was it aggressive? There's like a thousand different factors going into that. So I'm going to go with agree, but I barely made it above the threshold to go with neutral because war almost always leads to bad outcomes. It certainly has in more recent years, but... There, there's some notable exceptions, I'll put it that way. A nation usually needs to... Or sorry, a nation usually needs a military in order to survive. Yeah, strongly agree. The government should not break up monopolies. Monopolies are one of those extremely rare cases where I think there does need to be some intervention if you do have a true sustained monopoly, but the thing is... As Thomas Sowell once said in Basic Economics, you have to remember that competition is a stubborn weed, not a delicate flower. And so a monopoly that isn't government sanctioned and doesn't have the backing of a government almost never lasts for very long because there's almost always another company that comes in. Yeah, they may be able to, to be able to go in and set prices essentially to anything that they want for a while, but eventually... And by eventually, I mean within the span of a couple of years, maybe, at the absolute most. Competition comes in. Uh, I could give a thousand examples here, but for time's sake, I'm not going to. But the only sustained monopolies, really, that people constantly cite in history were ones that had the backing of the government. And so the only way that a monopoly really can be sustained for a long period of time is if the government stamps out their competition, not them. So with that one, I'm going to go with strongly agree because I can't justify working it down to just an agree. So government should not break up monopolies. Theocracy is a good system of government. Um, with the exception of Israel, I can't think of a single successful theocracy at any point in history. And even that one was rife with problems. So I'm going to go with disagree. I can think of one really notable exception. Yeah, disagree. Wait, how was that worded? Theocracy is a good system of government. Yeah, okay, disagree. Just making sure I had it worded right. We have no right to military uh, to militarily in, uh, intervene in other nations. In general, that's true. Yeah, I would go with strongly agree. There are exceptions, like if we're attacked or something like that. I kind of already went over that, so I agree in general. Children should be educated in religious values. Well, again, this, is, this goes back to do I look at it from a moral perspective or a political perspective? Because if we're talking about a moral perspective, then yes, absolutely. I, I think that it's you know, bordering on child abuse not to. I, that might be a little bit too strong, but as far as actually educating a child and, and bringing up a child in the way that they should go, that's a biblical command. And so I think that every child should grow up learning religious values. And even if the parents don't agree, I don't think that the children should be, of course, forced into that kind of education. But I think that it's a good idea for them to even educate their own children on religious values, even if they don't agree with them or don't believe in God because they are the best values. Now, do I think that the state should be handling that? And do I think that the state should be forcing that education on people? No. So again, do I go with what I believe as far as what I think is morally correct? Or should I go with what I believe politically? Because my political answer would be strongly disagree. My moral answer would be strongly agree. This is one of the reasons that, like I said, I find these tests somewhat taxing. I'm... I'm going to go with the Cree. I'm just afraid that this answer is going to be taken as I think that there should be like church sanctioned schools run by the government and taxpayer funded or something like that. That's, the, that's what they're meaning by that. 
I don't believe that. This may be one of those that's so vague I have to go with neutral. Because I, I think they obviously should. I, I tell you what, I'm going to justify going with agree because I wouldn't have a problem with a government-funded school teaching children religious values. I would have an issue with them teaching them religion as, like, the only way. But if you're talking about just having a comparative religion class, I don't see an issue with that being in a state school or a government school. I don't have a problem with them reading things that are written by atheists or even arguments against religion. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go with agree. Let's see. Border protection is important. Strongly agree. People's freedom should have no limits. Pretty much, yeah. Um, again, that's so vague that... Are, are you talking about anarchy? Because I'm obviously not in favor of anarchy. I think that freedom should have no limits with the exception of harming the freedom of another person, which in a lot of ways is the antithesis of freedom. Because if you kill somebody, you've robbed them of all their freedom. That's why we have laws in place to preserve liberty. So as far as that goes and understanding that a breach of that law, a breach of that correlative duty to a right would be a limit of freedom itself as opposed to an excess of it, I would have to go with strongly agree. I'm afraid that what they're looking at there, though, is, is that that means that I would be in favor of anarchy, which I'm obviously not. Again, it's, it's hard because you're basically guessing at what was in the person who created this quiz's head at the time that they wrote it. I would say that freedom should have no limits, but obviously having certain laws in place that uh, preserve the life, liberty, and property of people against other people that might do them harm is liberty. I think that that actually is a freedom. So I would go with strongly agree, but I think that they're probably going to misinterpret that. Nobody but me can adequately represent my views. Mm. I'm going to go with in principle, because there are people that I agree with a lot, but I can find something I disagree with with just about everybody. So I guess I'd go with strongly agree. I'm kind of surprised that that's in there. I don't understand what they're stabbing at with that one. The government must be by the people and for the people. Yeah. Laws should not be based on religion. Again, this is another one that's kind of sticky because when I look at laws and say, okay, what's the basis of this law? And they say, well, it should be a law because that's what the Bible says. Okay, you're going to need a different answer than that because as much as I love and respect and revere the Bible, it being against the Bible is not a reason to make a thing illegal. If that were the case, then lying would be illegal. If that were the case, then all manner of things that are legal would be illegal. Uh, lusting after a woman would be punishable uh, by law. So that's not... I... I don't know. Uh, laws should definitely be based... The problem is, when you go to the other extreme, there are also people that say a law should never be based on a religious principle. And my response to that is but the Bible says stealing is wrong, so you think stealing should be legal? Like, they don't... They they have a, a myriad of self-contradiction when they do that, but I, I don't think that just because a law is found in a religious text or a religious doctrine or reflects a religious principle that it should automatically not be a law. That shouldn't be an argument against it being a law. But I also don't think that just because it's in a religious text that that means that it should be a law. So, again, it depends on what you mean by that. I think that laws should be somewhat based on religion, somewhat based on religious teaching, because otherwise there would be no such thing as, as law. I mean, basically every law that we have in this country, with a handful of exceptions, is somewhere has its roots back in the law of the Old Testament. And so I'm going to go with disagree, but I can't go to strongly disagree, because I, I think that what they're thinking of when they go to strongly disagree is that person that basically says, well, if it's in a religious text, then it shouldn't be a law. And that's not the case. That, that's not accurate. So I'm going to go with disagree. Let's see. Oppression by corporations is more of a concern than oppression by governments. Strongly disagree. In a free market, it is impossible for a corporation to oppress you. I, I can't even think of a scenario where a corporation can oppress freedom in a free market system. Because the only way that you would be 
compelled to engage with them as if you choose to do so. You, you can't. In, in, an, in a true free market, it would be impossible to be oppressed by a corporation or any other private citizen. So I'm going to go with strongly disagree. State and local laws should have precedence over national laws. Uh, yeah, strongly agree. It is very important to maintain law and order. Strongly agree. Okay, here's my results. And remember, this is the shorter version. I may take the longer one and post my results, but let's see how I did. Uh, I'm a fanatic federalist. That doesn't... Oh my gosh, a 100% on federalist. Yeah! All right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Neutral on democracy versus authority. See, I don't even get that one. That's a weird dichotomy to me anyway, because... Democracy can be authority. A democracy can be just as tyrannical as a monarchy is. I mean, you need to look no further than some of the writings of Plato and look at what happened with Socrates. I mean, that was a democracy that was subverting the law and taking away people's rights because the majority of people went along with it. That's what mob mentality is. And so I, I find that I even find that category incorrect. The fact that democracy versus authority, it should be authority versus uh, liberty, I, I would think. So democracy is a, a bad antithesis to authority because de democracies can be very free and they also can be very authoritative. That's why America is not a democracy. That's why America is a republic. But anyway, all right, I'm a moderate isolationist. That's probably accurate. Um, I don't know if it's talking about militarily or from a market perspective, because I definitely am not a globalist on either one of those fronts, but I think that my percentages might be slightly different if we're talking about military versus market. Uh, I'm neutral on military versus pacifist. That's probably about right, honestly. And again, I think that I would... Hmm. I'm, I'm interested that I'm slightly more pacifist than military. That may be one that would change in the more detailed test. Let's see. On security versus freedom, I'm neutral. Oh, that's not true at all. Like, that one's completely wrong. You can watch my coverage just of the past few weeks and tell that I am way more on the side of liberty than I am security. Again, I think this is partly because some of those questions were insanely vague. Uh, fanatical on markets. Okay, that one's probably right. Also, that's another one that I find the dichotomy completely incorrect. Markets versus equality? Well, no, in a free market, everyone is equal. Everyone starts out equal. Everybody has the same ability to go out and make gain. Uh, equality is not the opposite of a market. In fact, a, a true free market is equality. And so that's a really dumb way to categorize these two different ones. This this, again, is another indication that this was probably made by somebody on the political left. I don't think that they did a horrible job, but that that's a pretty big red flag that they were looking at things like welfare as equality when the exact opposite is actually true. If you're going to give money only to certain people from the government, if you're going to take uh, tax money from some citizens to give to other, that's the exact opposite of equality. So... Uh, fanatic markets. I mean, it, it got me right on that one. I just think that that's a dumb dichotomy there. On uh, religious versus secular, again, this is probably because some of those questions that asked me on religion were very incorrect because I'm guessing if they were able to actually dig deep, I'd probably be about 100% religious or darn close to it. So again, that, that's one of those that I think the test probably did a pretty bad job on. Uh, let's see, neutral on progress versus tradition. That one's probably incorrect because I, again, I don't know what they mean by that. It's too vague. But I would probably, I would just sort of assumed that I would have come down a little bit harder on tradition. Not completely, but, you know, maybe a 60% tradition and instead I got 45. That's probably incorrect. Moderate assimilationalist. That's probably true. I do really like other cultures, and I love cultural uh, appropriation. That's one of my favorite things. I absolutely adore cultural appropriation. Uh, in fact, I've spent the vast majority of this quarantine watching anime. So <laughs> I'm a big fan of cultural appropriation. 
But yeah, that's probably more or less accurate. So this went honestly about the way that I expected it to. Um, looking at all those different results, uh, about what I would have guessed going into it, that it nailed me on some categories and it couldn't be further from the truth on a couple and, and it got me more or less in the ballpark of where I would have assumed that I would wind up on most of the others. So, you know, just something to do for fun. Maybe check it out. Feel free to share your results either here in the comment section or if you want to talk about some of these things, feel free to do that as well. <laughs> It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.